In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a pendulum and seeing how it accelerates back and forth, changes its position, and what those graphs look like as far as plotting the kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy, and basically talking about simple harmonic motion and the period of a pendulum. So first of all, um, a pendulum is basically a mass that's um, attached to some kind of string that swings back and forth. And the reason why it does that is if we draw one of these spheres off to the side, it has multiple forces acting on it. So let's just pretend this one is at position A. It has the string pulling upwards on it. So it has a force of tension pulling on it on some sort of angle. And then we have the force of gravity pulling straight down on it as usual. Now that force of gravity has multiple components the way that it's hanging. And it has a component that goes in this direction which we'll call the Y component. And then we'll have a second component that goes in this direction, which we'll call the X direction. Now what happens is these two Y components are going to cancel each other out. And then that just leaves the X component. And that X component is our net force that causes the pendulum to accelerate. And it has some form of that everywhere along the way those angles look slightly different and of course look completely different over here at position B where there's just one vertical force upwards and one vertical force downwards from FT and FG that are canceled out. But because the pendulum has inertia, it's going to move through this center point over here. And then um, as it rises up, it's going to slow down. And then as it moves towards position B, it's always going to speed up. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about what's happening with the pendulum and how to create those graphs. So let's go ahead and start by analyzing kinetic energy. So we're taking a look at kinetic energy and how it rises and falls with respect to time. So we're going to start at position A. Now, the way that the velocities work is that you're going to have a velocity of zero at the very, very top. And then as it moves down towards position B, it's going to speed up. And then if it goes up towards position C, it's going to slow down and then it's going to go back to rest momentarily again. And then it's going to repeat that cycle, but going in the other direction as it moves down towards B, it's going to accelerate, it's going to speed up. And then as it moves up away from the earth, it's going to slow down towards position A and then hit a velocity of zero. And then the cycle will continue from there. So if we're thinking about kinetic energy, um, kinetic energy is one half um, V squared. So a couple things about kinetic energy is it is um, highly dependent on the mass and the velocity, but the mass of our pendulum isn't changing. It's just whatever this sphere is. So it's completely dependent on the velocity. And because it's squared, it's never going to be a negative value. So we know that our first point is going to be right on zero. So that's going to be at position A because it's going to begin at rest and then it begins to accelerate and it speeds up to its maximum speed, which is its maximum position. So it's going to go up like this and then reach its maximum velocity at its equilibrium position of B over here. And then the reason why the curve starts steep and starts to slow down a little bit as far as the rate that it gains kinetic energy is because the way that it's angled right here, it has a larger force component pulling it. And then remember, there is actually not, none of that X component over here. So this blue vector gets um, starts large and gets smaller and smaller as you go to B. So the rate that it's rising is less and less, but its maximum value is at B. So what's going to happen is as the pendulum starts rising up from B to C, it's going to have a vector that looks like this, but in the opposing direction. So that vector is going to be non-existent at B. And then as you rise up, that opposing vector is going to be greater and greater. And it's going to cause that kinetic energy to dip down and then eventually hit zero once again, once it momentarily hits rest. And then it's going to accelerate sort of quickly in the beginning and then a little bit less at the end and then reach its maximum velocity again at point B, but just going in the other direction. And then as it's rising up away from the earth, again, the earth is opposing it and then causing it to come down again 
and then return back to position A, which is a velocity of zero and kinetic energy of zero. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the gravitational potential energy. And the gravitational potential energy is dependent on the mass times G 9.8 and the height and MG are gonna be constants for this particular situation. So it's all dependent on height. All right, now for this one, it's going to have its maximum height here and here. And the way the gravitational potential energy works is you pick a baseline height to be your zero. So we'll call this baseline height right here where it's at the very bottom zero meters. So every height above that is going to be zero. So we're not going to dip into any negative regions. So we know that we're going to have the same maximum height at A and C, assuming that there is no energy loss as it moves from position A to C. So we know that A is its maximum value. So it's going to start up at its very highest position here at A. And then this vector over here that caused the pendulum to accelerate downward is going to make its height dip down quickly in the beginning and then a little bit less towards the end until it reaches position B where it reaches height equals zero. So if the H is zero, then the potential energy must be zero as well. And then from there, it has its greatest speed at B. So it's going to still be gaining height pretty quickly from there. And then less and less and less as it moves away from position B. And it's going to slow down more and more until that velocity hits zero. And it's going to reach its maximum height once again. And then from position C, um, that same idea is going to repeat. It's going to accelerate sort of quickly in the beginning. That quick acceleration is going to bring it down and make its height decrease a bunch and then less and less as it reaches B until it reaches a height of zero again. And then from there, it's going to sweep upwards sort of quickly and then not so quickly towards the end and then have its final maximum height at A. So that is one full period from position A to position A because one period is one full cycle. Now, if you take a look at the sum of K and UG, that equals the TME or total mechanical energy. And the total mechanical energy of the system stays constant, assuming no energy is lost to the environment or internally through heat. So if you summed up the values of the green and red lines, then they would sum up to the purple line. So anywhere you see UG at its minimum, kinetic is going to be at its maximum and vice versa. And then everywhere in between, they're going to sum up still to that purple value as well. Uh, we're going to take a look at the period in terms of looking at the pendulum formula. So the period of a pendulum equals two pi times the square root of the length of the string divided by the acceleration due to gravity. The length of the string is technically from its pivot point up here to the center of mass of the object. So let's say, for example, we're taking a look at this graph and from A to A, um, we got a period of 1.7 seconds. So what we do is set that equal to two pi and then maybe take a measurement of the string. We'll say the string is 50 centimeters, which would then convert to 0 0.5 meters. And then that's divided by G. So if we work that out mathematically, then we can solve for the acceleration due to gravity experimentally and mathematically as well. So now we're going to go ahead and divide each side by two pi to cancel out the two pi on the right side. Um, we are going to square both sides as well to get rid of the square root on this side. And that's going to leave us with 0 0.051 equals 0 0.5 over G. And then um, what we can do is do one final step. We can go ahead and cross multiply those two. And then we have 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.051, which is our little G value. And then our little, little G value will come out to 9.80 meters per second squared. So that's how you can solve for the little g value experimentally and mathematically. Um, if you time the period of the pendulum and then plug that in for your t, you can work that out mathematically as long as you measure out the length of the string. And you can solve for the length of the string or the period 
if you have all of those other variables as well, just by doing a little bit of algebra and rearranging the variables. So I hope that was helpful in helping you analyze a pendulum, looking at energy, simple harmonic motion, and the period formula. Thank you for watching and listening.